to the second lecture on the particular topic on present status of Indian agriculture. In my earlier lecture on this topic, I explained some points regarding current status of Indian agriculture. Now in this lecture, I will explain some more points about the current status of Indian agriculture. In earlier lecture, we studied about the share of agriculture sector in national income, employment generation in agriculture sector, role of industrial development, what role the agriculture sector plays in the development of industries, what is the contribution of agricultural sector in the production and supply of food grains in the country and what is the status of the rate of growth of agricultural sector in the current decade. These are the points which I elaborated, which I mentioned in my earlier lecture. Now in this lecture, I will explain some more points which focus our attention towards the current scenario or the current status of agricultural sector in India. The sixth point is about international trade. What is the role of agricultural sector in international trade? Agricultural sector contributes 15 to 20 percent in total exports of our country. Total international trade as far as international trade is concerned, the agricultural sector contributes 15 to 20 percent. We do export various agricultural produce to other countries of the world. For example, the beverages like tea, coffee, various spices, fruits, vegetables, tobacco, milk and milk products, food grains, particularly like basmati rice, fish, meat. These are the commodities predominantly we do export these commodities at the international trade, at the international market. Therefore, the agricultural sector plays a very important role in the international trade of our country. The next point is domestic trade and transportation. In case of domestic trade, the agricultural sector plays an important role because in India, averagely, most of the people do spend near about 60% or more than 60% of their income on in purchasing agricultural commodities. They do expenditure. The 60 to 70 percent of expenditure it comprises of agricultural commodities like food grains, vegetables, fruits, beverages, spices. These all are the commodities which do purchase regularly from the market and we spend most of our income on purchasing agricultural commodities. So in this manner, in this way, in domestic trade, the agricultural sector plays an important role. The agricultural sector do provide raw material to industries. It also accelerates the production of various instruments which are required for the agricultural sector, production of insecticides, pesticides. These are the commodities which have been produced for the development of agricultural sector. So in this way, in the domestic trade, agricultural sector plays an important role in our economy. And as far as the transportation is concerned, the linkages between villages, towns, cities, Transportation of agricultural produce uh, which moves from rural area to towns and urban areas. So in 
the transportation sector in domestic trade this agricultural sector plays a very important and dominant role the next point is about general price stability the overall general price stability of the country directly or indirectly depends upon the prices of agricultural commodities when prices of agricultural produce or agricultural commodities fluctuates it will affect the general price level of the country general price stability therefore depends upon the prices of agricultural produce prices of agricultural commodities because the prices of industries produced goods or industrial sector the prices of the commodities which have been produced in the industries also depends upon the prices of the raw material and basic raw material is provided through agricultural sector to the industries so overall price level of the country depends upon the prices of agricultural commodities more the agricultural price fluctuates it will create a fluctuating trend of prices in overall economy therefore as per as the price stability is concerned the agricultural sector plays a very important role in stabilizing the prices of the commodities in overall economy next point is the agricultural sector is a source of revenue to the government not more it contributes in the revenue but some sort of revenue the government generates through the agricultural sector from land revenue excise duties irrigation sales tax and other type of tax the government particularly the state government can generate certain revenue from this agricultural sector still the next point is uh, agriculture still a gamble of monsoon it means the productivity of agricultural sector depends upon the gamble of monsoon failure of rainfall in some parts of the country or excessive rains or floods in certain parts of the country will definitely affect over the productivity of agricultural sector no doubt we have uh, provided we have given much more attention to the irrigation in 1950s and 60s but still agricultural sector depends upon the monsoon and good productivity of agriculture production in the agriculture still depends upon the monsoon the next point is limited use of new technology in agriculture no doubt in the 1960s through the policy of green revolution seed fertilizer water technology we increased the productivity of our agricultural sector but particularly in that phase of green revolution we concentrated to increase the productivity of wheat and rice only but in case of the productivity of other commodities there is still space to implement new technology we implemented the technology in a limited sense in an agricultural sector therefore there is a limited use of new technology in agricultural sector the another limitation is that our farmers most of the agricultural farmers uh, farmers are from they are under they comes under the categories of marginalized farmers and small farmers the majority of, of farmers are marginalized and small so they are unable to purchase the technology they are unable to implement uh, the uh, new technology in their agricultural sector due to the lack of capital therefore uh, we fail to adopt new technology in agricultural sector 
Next point is unequal distribution of land. This is the most important issue as far as the agricultural or the development of agricultural sector is concerned. We fail to implement the land distribution program in our country in 1950s and 1960s. The 50 percent of land on an average the uh, half of the agricultural land is distributed among uh, 80 percent of 80 to 85 percent of marginalized farmers, small farmers. The, mar the section of marginalized farmers, small farmers and landless laborers, they are around about the 82%, they contribute around about 82% of the farmers. And only 7% of big landlords, they are having 47% of agricultural land. They possess ownership of the 47% of the agri total agricultural land of the country. So it is a wide unequal distribution. Inequality in the distribution in the land we can see as per as the ownership of land is concerned. Only 7% of big landlords possess they own 47 to 50 percent of the land and at the other side 80 to 85 percent of landless laborers, small farmers and marginal farmers, they do possess the 50 percent of the land. So it explains the disparity in the distribution of the rural asset among the rural population. And the last point which explains the current status of agriculture is about imbalance in the production of agricultural commodities and imbalance in the development of agriculture. Imbalance in production in the sense the production of food grains only we are concentrating and we are increasing the production of food grains. But non-food grain items are not, non-food grain category of crops are not increasing. The production of those commodities are not increasing in the country. That for, that's why there is an imbalance in the production in between production of food grains and production of non-food grains. And imbalance in the development in the sense the Agricultural development of a specific regions or selective regions uh, took place. Therefore, we can see there is an imbalance in the development of agricultural sector. Some states like Punjab, Haryana and northern part of Uttar Pradesh, some parts of uh, Maharashtra like uh, Western Maharashtra, and in some other places, they are having a good resources and ample of development of agricultural sector took place in these particular places. But the other regions, they are not very developed in agriculture. We can see in overall country, we can see the imbalance in the development of various regions as far as the agricultural production is concerned. So in this way, we can see the imbalance in production and imbalance in overall development of the agricultural sector. So in this way, in this particular lecture, I explained few more points which focuses on the present status of Indian agriculture. This lecture I will I stop here. Thank you. Thank you very much.